the outdoors fresh outdoors word up it's a beautiful day we out here in nature uh again i'm on this uh this book club series that i'm doing i've got a bunch of different books that i'm reading but uh, i want to touch on uh ghost land and american history and haunted places by colin dickey uh, once again and I want to read an excerpt from a chapter that's called A Devilish Place. I'm dealing with um, ghosts in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Or at least the stories and the history tied to that. Because this is one of the earliest settlements in America. So I'm just going to skip around and start a few chapters in. And just read a chapter or two, and then we're going to pause and, and reflect. It's hard to find a building in Shaco Bottom that doesn't have a ghost story attached to it. Local historian and paranormal investigator Pamela Kenny speculates that this is because Virginia was home to the earliest settlements in North America, which makes sense so long as we all agree that by settlements... We really mean settlements of Europeans, which is to say the kinds of ghosts you look for and the kinds of ghosts you see depend on your frame of reference. For when I began to tally the supernatural records of the area at the heart of Richmond, a simple fact emerged. The ghosts of Shaco Bottom are overwhelmingly white. This is curious because if you walk just a little way away from the haunted bars and shops down by the freeway you'll find the devil's half acre for decades black men women and children were brought here in prison and tortured while they waited to be sold to planters and spec speculators dozens of slave traders had offices here where slave auctions were widely advertised and men came from all over the south to make their fortunes on the backs of those enslaved Tens of thousands of men's and women's lives changed hands here in the years leading up to the Civil War. All the activity centered on Wall Street in the heart of Shaco Bottom. Today, Wall Street is gone, replaced by the freeway, though the rest of the area remains mostly unchanged. While it's difficult to estimate how many people lost their lives in the slave pens of Shaco Bottom, Hundreds of sets of human remains have been found in a nearby slave burial ground. We typically think of ghost stories in terms of the remnants of a terrible tragedy, a past we cannot escape, or just unavenged. Why, then, in a place that should be so haunted by the legacy of such a terrible injustice, the scene of countless deaths, should there be nothing but white ghosts? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. and it gets deep it gets deep you know I, I want to continue reading like there's this um, this excerpt from uh, Frederick Law Olmsted the great architect behind New York's Central Park while he was touring in the 1850s he happened upon a commission agent's office empty except for three Negro children and uh yeah that was just uh I'm not gonna that's that's disturbing and I don't wanna um spill too much I kinda wanna leave cliffhangers there because I do want you all to check out Ghostland, an American History and Haunted Places by Colin Dickey. And uh, it's, it's a real easy read, um, especially if you're not an avid reader or you're just um, getting into uh, enjoying the leisure reading, things like that. Um, you know, it's, um, it's a very easy read and it's intriguing. It'll hook you. And there's so many different stories, so many different layers and elements uh, to these different stories. Like, for instance, Ghostland talks about... You got 
houses and mansions. You know, so there's five chapters on that. Then they talk about bars, restaurants, hotels, and brothels. There's three chapters on that. Then they talk about prisons, asylums, graveyards, cemeteries, and parks. There's another five chapters on that. And then there's cities and towns, you know. And there's, you know, three chapters and then the uh, epilogue on that. Um, you know, so when you hear people say ghost town, stuff like that. Um, he covers it all, man. He covers it a whole range. And there's so many more stories that can be covered um, that, you know, may have not been included. So there could very well be a ghost land part two that Colin Dickey might be be working on. But um, Shaco Bottom, you know, I never even heard of... Um, heard of that i mean i was vaguely familiar but uh you know shaco bottom richmond virginia how that was uh you know where a lot of the slaves would basically get sold there like it was wall street it was wall street um and uh taking a lot down to uh louisiana you know other places in the south as well but louisiana was a real big um, buyer um, of, of that but it is interesting that you don't hear I mean well maybe it's just not common maybe I'm sure there are stories out there about black ghosts slave ghosts things like that but it's not very common it's not re very it's not really in the in the forefront as as often as you hear you know other famous or infamous uh, ghost stories and I wonder why that's so so reading this book has taken me into um, a direction of digging up the past uh, so basically kind of being like a, a historian I'm uh, I'm in film school I'm working on a documentary about family history ancestry um, you know family secrets as well um, good or bad you know and obviously that's going to shake some people and, uh, you know, some people, they shy away from the past, um, family legacies and things like that. Just, you know, you'd be digging up the foundation and um, you don't know what you're going to get. I'm just, uh, you know, I just want to, I want to know. And, um, I know I'm not the only one out there that would like to know more about their family history, uh, ancestry, heritage, and um, stories, good or bad. I mean, like, I feel like we can learn from that. I feel like we can grow from that. You know, it's uh, experience. Experience, history, life, experience, all of that, that's the greatest teacher you know and obviously that's going to rub a lot of people the wrong way so I got I'm, you know I'm mindful of that as well but um, I may end up making this documentary and I may not never show it to the world it may just be something just for me maybe something just for my family maybe and then you know we just figure out the next step from there but um I feel like it's something I need to do. It's a it's a quest that I've been on for a very long time, being embarrassed basically in you know when I was in AP English honors English and um, in high school and stuff. When we was working on this big family tree project, everybody was working on their family tree project, and I only can trace my roots back to like you know great grandparents. You know, and everybody else in my class, they can go back to great, 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 great grandparents. They can trace some of their bloodline back to like the 1700s, back to different countries and all types of stuff that, um, not that I was jealous. I just, I felt, you know, I was happy for them. I felt, um, I guess confused and kind of left out. Like, I just felt like a, a mystery. I felt like, uh pieces of puzzle of of my existence was uh 
was either missing, misplaced, changed, you know, like pieces of puzzle forced in there. You force a piece in that don't really fit, you know. So a lot of our, you know, narrative, our family narrative uh, could just be hearsay. It could just be, um, you know, legends that we created or other people told us that that's part of our bloodline. So, I'm like a family historian in a sense. I'm a, a family archaeologist in a sense. Digging up our past, digging up the stories to find the truth, looking at city records to trace back and correlate. Um, you know, when family says, this is our family member, blah, 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 this is what they did. And you know, trace those names back, find the city records. That's, you know, that's that's part of the quest that I'm on to really, really do some investigative work and um, and find some answers that I, I have a lot of questions. And I have a wonderful, amazing family that con- that are contributing and help, helping me out with this project as well. It's... Uh, it's eye-opening. It's scary. It's uh, exciting. It's nerve-wracking. But um, it's nothing but good intentions behind it. Nothing but good intentions behind it. And um, I'm thinking that uh, I'm knowing that there's going to be a book that comes out of this with the blessing of my family. And again, maybe this would just be something that we just keep in-house. And we've been doing that for a very long time, keeping things in-house. And where, where, has it, where has it got our family? So I'm just reflecting. It's a wonderful day. You know, we've been getting hit with a lot of blizzards, a lot of hail storms. Um you know, crazy weather, and now it's May, and it's, uh, you know, we didn't really get treated with the April showers bring May flowers, but uh, hey, it's May, and it's looking good, it's looking good, sorry if you're hearing that in the back, I got um, some tea, this apple ginger tea, and that's just a little flap on it, flapping around, so that may have disturbed part of the video, I'm, I apologize. But um, again, I uh, I'll leave you all with this. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others, and be kind to nature. Be kind to nature. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Be kind to nature. And I promise you, man woman, child. The universe will support you. The universe will support all of us. Peace, love, smiles, truth, galaxy. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Love you.